right, Andrew. So it looks like the most significant injury report for fantasy owners this week is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It is a crazy injury report. It's vast. It's long. And I feel sorry for Tom Brady as I look at it because we already know that Chris Godwin is out. He's been dealing with hamstring injury. Best case projections haven't come back in week five. Slow playing it given that he is coming back off an ACL injury as well. Mike Evans suspended. So that's another big one. Russell Gage uh, did not practice Friday. He had a limited work throughout the week, did not practice Friday. Rashad Perriman got in a limited practice today. Full participant Scotty Miller. And they did just sign Cole Beasley for whatever that's worth. You know, a slot <laughs> guy. He's The only reason I think Cole Beasley was still a free agent in September is not necessarily ability. We'll just see how fast he can learn the Buccaneers offense, given that he just, like I said, signed midweek what do you think when you think of all these buccaneers injuries are you in a position where you think you can start any of these guys any wide receiving talent for the buccaneers are going to stand out i mean you gotta wait till the final entry report comes out and you see who's active and who's not to be to be safe starting anybody on this roster honestly scotty miller actually looked kind of good last week any of the six guys the six or seven top guys on the roster could be decent enough flex plays if they don't have anybody else in front of them. But who knows out of everybody who's going to even be healthy this week. Scotty Miller, three for eight as far as targets and receptions, 34 yards, nothing special. Last week, though, you also have to consider you're going against a talented New Orleans Saints defense that has given Tom Brady plenty of trouble throughout Mm -hmm. his short tenure in Tampa Bay. Going this week against the Green Bay Packers, and Tom Brady's had success against them for whatever that's worth. When we're talking about going down to the third wide receiver, I I think one thing was very evident when Tom Brady left New England. He stopped becoming the guy that can carry a bad roster. I forgot Julio Jones. Julio Jones is also on this injury (laughs) report and unlikely to play. So throw that one in there. When you're throwing out Scotty Miller and street free agents, people that are bagging groceries, it, it becomes a huge problem for an offense to be able to put anything together. I think if anything, obviously, they're going to want to double down on the running game. That's probably one thing that would benefit them keeping Aaron Rodgers and that offense off the field. I think we're going to have a very conservative Bucs approach to this game. And it makes sense given that the Buccaneers probably have the best defense in the National Football League right now. Yeah, I mean, I think that Leonard Fournette is definitely a must start this week. Uh, He's going to probably get some of Brady's attention through the air and he's going to get a lot of carries. You might even see Rashad White getting some work this week. They're going to be busy in that running back room. So let's talk about the main guy. Tom Brady, starting him against the Packers with all these injuries at wide receiver? The one league I have Tom Brady in, I picked up Tua, thankfully, and I'm going to play him this week, even though he's playing against a tough Buffalo defense as well. How far do you think that Tom Brady drops in most rankings? Is he kind of a quarterback two? I would put him on the quarterback one, quarterback two border. I mean, he's still Tom Brady, but it's it's rough this week without his weapons. Assuming that Russell Gage is out, that would by default make Brashad Perriman the top wide receiver. Is he a flex play at best? Uh, If he is the top receiver, I think he's at least a flex play. I mean, he's going to get volume one way or another. Whoever's in there is going to be potentially playable. Um, I don't, I think you got to cap your expectations, but you're probably going to get some points. What about like a guy like Cole Beasley, if he is able to get on the field? We've seen Cole Beasley be a productive fantasy wide receiver before and in recent history with Josh Allen just last year. Yeah, I I think back to when uh, Antonio Brown signed with the Patriots uh, for that one week that he played with them. And he joined right before the game, practically. And Tom Brady found him for a touchdown. And Cole Beasley, if he does play this week, he could actually be a pretty good option. Yeah, because I think he's more of a traditional slot wide receiver than a guy like Scotty Miller is, right? Yeah, I think absolutely. that Tom Brady will look for a guy like that in this offense. Scotty Miller's might get a few like deep opportunities in this game because they're going to need someone to be able to spread the field. Scotty Miller, maybe just kind of like a dart throw. Yeah. I'm talking like if you're in like that 14 team mix, then I think that that's <laughs> kind of like where Scotty Miller kind of falls in because I'm not expecting more than maybe like five to six targets. And if he does something fantastic with one of them, lands in the end zone, great. It's it's just going to be tough to predict really who's going to be the ba- main beneficiary. Out the gate, I think Perriman is my main guy. I, I'm picturing uh, Cole Beasley turning into Wes Welker this week. <laughs> Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, Cole Beasley, the next mm-hmm. one. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Well, we know that 
it's currently a rough situation in Tampa Bay in terms of the injuries. If you are struggling with that and that is hurting and affecting your lineup, uh, don't be afraid to drop in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, and stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you on the next one.